Bandmade. When I first heard this band name, I was a bit skeptical. I was told they were making great rock music, but I wondered why a band with great music would have to have a made aesthetic. It took a while, but after several recommendations, I finally checked out their music. And I admit, at first, it was difficult for me to fully grasp exactly what I was seeing and hearing. But the more I watched and listened, I was captivated by their music. The band was much more than an image. They were writing great rock music. <laughs> Not only that, they were raising the bar with a unique composition style, mixing progressive elements with fun and engaging sounds, along with powerful and meaningful lyrics. It was also obvious how much they cared about their fans and giving them a great experience with their music and performances. Few of us rock fans in America have felt a bit starved of that fresh, unique rock sound that we used to love, but I've met many people over the past year who have had similar experiences to me. Bandmade is scratching an itch I didn't even know I had, in turn inspiring me to have a new love for playing guitar, drums, and even bass, all of which are astoundingly well composed and performed by the members of Bandmade. In case this is your first time hearing about them, Bandmade is an all-girl Japanese rock band who has generated a close-knit and creative community of fans who use their passion and talents to help share the music of Bandmade with as many people as possible. We do this because we've had our passion for rock music reignited after discovering them, and personally, I've never seen such an awesome community of cool and friendly people surrounding a band. But why does Bandmade generate so much passion and excitement for their music? In my opinion, it's a combination of many things, but two things in particular do it for me. First, they compose their music in a fun and engaging way, giving each song fresh sounds and surprising gems all the way throughout while displaying a massive amount of talent. Second, each member has a unique brand of charisma. Their personalities and close friendships with each other make me care about them even more. They work as a team doing what's best for the music rather than trying to steal the spotlight. So the obvious revelation I've had after discovering them is that rock is not dead. You just need to look in the right places. Since finding Bandmade, I've met many of their fans who in turn have recommended more incredible rock bands for me that I would have never heard of without getting into Bandmade first. So in honor of this massive impact they've had on my life, I want to do my part by making it easier to get to know them. To start, I'm going to share the story of how Bandmade was formed. And I gotta say, the research that I've done for this video has made me love the band even more, and I hope it does for you too. The story starts with the two core members, Kabato and Konami. Konami is the lead guitarist and main composer of Bandmade, and Miku Kabato is the founder and leader of the band, as well as the main lyricist, rhythm guitarist, and second lead vocalist. They work together as musical composer and lyricist to create songs that touch the hearts of the listeners and leave us in awe of their talents. But interestingly, when the band originally formed in July of 2013, Kabato didn't yet know how to play guitar. Konami played the role of sensei to Kabato, and now she's grown into a very skilled and capable guitarist, with Konami writing progressively more and more challenging guitar parts for her to play. But let's go back to the beginning. The founding of Bandmade started with Kabato. As a child, Miku was one of those charismatic kids who would sing anywhere she went. She loved it, and in 2012, she attended a vocal school for a while. She had also worked part-time in a maid cafe, which inspired her to envision a band that juxtaposed a maid cafe image with rock music. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with maid cafes, they're cafes where waitresses dress in maid costumes and act as servants to the customers, treating them as masters and mistresses, as if they were hired maid staff in a private home, rather than public cafe servers. And because of this, Bandmade refers to their live shows as okiji, or servings, and they refer to their fans as masters and princesses. And in my opinion, it's their way of dignifying their fans and having this humble approach of wanting to serve up their fans a great rock performance. With this unique concept in mind, Kabato reached out to a production company with her idea who decided to take on the project. Unfortunately, it was completely in the conceptual phase, and there was no band in mind yet. So the first step was to find people to be the actual members of the band. 
The manager of the production company started looking up YouTube videos and found a singer-songwriter who was obviously talented, but she didn't show her face in much of the video. Kabato had to watch carefully for the few moments she could actually see the face to see if the performer would fit with her idea of the band. Fortunately, the girl glanced at the camera a couple times and it was enough for Kabato to know that she would be a perfect fit. They reached out to her on YouTube, back when YouTube still had messaging, explaining that they were forming a band named Bandmade, and asked if she'd like to join as the guitarist. At that time, this performer was working towards making a debut as an artist and had many auditions set up, but she decided to go visit the company before making any commitments. When she arrived, she spoke to the president of the company who asked her what she thought of playing guitar in a maid outfit. Right then and there, she said she was in, and so, Konami and Kabato were the first two members of what would become Bandmade. Konami had dressed as a maid for a high school festival in the past, so it wasn't a strange concept to her. Now, she'd actually began her music journey on piano around 2000, and then picked up guitar in 2008, which explains her skills in well-rounded composition across instruments. The next step in the journey was to find a drummer and bassist. Up to this point, Konami had been performing as a singer-songwriter and had sometimes played with a backing drummer, Akane Hirose. They met in 2011 when their bands at the time did a joint show together and they found out that they lived near each other, so they became friends. This drummer, Akane, had started playing drums around 2009. In 2010, she picked up trombone and even piano in 2011, giving her a well-rounded understanding of music. So as soon as she left the meeting where she joined the band, Konami called Akane and told her that she had just joined this band and asked if she would join too. Akane was a bit shocked and reluctant after hearing about the maid outfits and took some time to consider it, but it ended up being perfect timing because Akane's main band had just disbanded, making her free agent, and she wanted to be in a band with Konami anyway, so she joined the band as well. Fun fact, Konami and Akane were both part of another band in 2015 called Mochi to Cheese, which played acoustic style music. But they only released two songs entitled Amehare and Anatato in 2015, and nothing since. In my humble opinion, both of their talents were massively underutilized in that format, with Konami on acoustic guitar and Akane on the cajon, but the songs sound good. I recommend giving them a listen. At this point, the band was set for drums and guitar, but still needed a bassist to complete the rock sound. Akane had attended the Tokyo School of Music Shibuya, which is a type of vocational school where people who want a career in music can learn the practical skills needed for it. And one of her friends at this school was a bassist named Misa. Like Konami, Misa had also started on piano. She had been playing since she was three or four years old, and eventually picked up bass, and had been playing in bands since around 2008. So Akane called Misa, who was also hesitant after hearing about the maid image. She said she wanted to take some time to think about it over a drink or two. After a substantial wait, Misa finally came back with her answer, admitting that it sounded like an interesting concept and that she'd give it a chance. And just like that, the musical core of Bandmade was formed. But at this point, the last thing Kabato had heard was that Konami was coming into the production company to discuss joining the band. The next thing she knew, they not only had Konami as a guitarist, but also a drummer and a bassist. Now to me, this was foreshadowing for how well these people work together as a team. Konami took the initiative to find a drummer, and Akane took the initiative to find a bassist. And it's no wonder they've gone on to create something so special. And the production company gave the three musicians a song to learn so they could get together and see how well the sound would work. According to Konami, Misa showed up to the first session with a bit of a hangover, but the three of them played the song and the production company filmed it to send to Kabato to see if they were a good fit. When Kabato watched the video, she was astounded by the talent of all three musicians. Up to this point, she had been only practicing vocals alone and never sang with musicians before. She thought the girls were really cool and wanted to meet them as soon as possible. Now, although Konami knew Akane and Akane knew Misa, Kabato had still never met any of them in person. She had only seen Konami in a YouTube video. So she met all three of them at the same time when they all attended a concert of an idol group from the same production company. They first met in the dressing room backstage, and then they went out to a bar for a drink to break the ice. The four girls hit it off right away and became good friends that night. 
They began getting together regularly for rehearsals, performing songs that were provided to them by the production company, which other artists actually wouldn't play. But they thought the songs were cool. And Kabato started as the lead vocalist of the band, having no experience with the guitar yet. They played that way for about four months, but as they played more and more and expanded their song catalog, they noticed that Kabato had a very bright and high-pitched voice. She felt it might be better for the band to have a deeper voice added to balance out the sound. So she talked to the band and management, and they started looking for another singer. I really appreciate the maturity and humility Miku showed here, making a decision that would make the band better, even though it could have been considered as her taking a less prominent role, and to me, that's one of the reasons they've been together for so long and are so successful. All of the members seem to have this similar attitude of supporting each other, and in turn the band, rather than trying to steal the spotlight and elevate themselves, which is just so respectable to me. So now the band was looking for another singer. And at that time, in August of 2013, Psyche happened to be working with the same production company as a solo singer. She had begun singing at age 14, and like Kabato, she had never worked with a band before. And when they heard her voice, they felt she would be a perfect match to balance out Kabato's bright, cheerful vocals with a warmer, darker tone. So they brought her in to do twin vocals, but after some time, they decided it would be more visually appealing if one of the singers was holding a guitar. The idea was run past Psyche, but she didn't want to hold the guitar. She told them that she was only there to sing, so Kabato agreed to do it herself for the good of the band. And for the first couple albums, the guitar only served as an ornament on Kabato to balance out the image. Sometimes she'd play one note just for fun, but nothing serious. But now, she's grown into a very solid guitarist. The next step was to settle on an image for the band. Kabato started drawing up design ideas and went on to work with a designer to get them made. The first iteration of costumes were much more uniform across the members than they are currently. Well, the first day they wore the maid outfits, Psyche threw away the apron that came with her costume. It turns out that she knew nothing about the maid aesthetic when she agreed to join the band, but she eventually accepted it, just minus the apron. After that, they went on to alter their individual outfits based on each of their unique personalities to prepare for making their major label debut. And that's where I'm going to wrap this story up for today. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I hope it helps you understand more about Bandmade. If you did enjoy this, please pound the like button so more people are able to see this video. And subscribe and turn on notifications so you know when I post new Bandmade videos. We do live streams every week over on Twitch, and also do a lot of fun reactions on this channel and over on Patreon. So if you want to check out any of that stuff, the links will all be below. But most importantly, if you haven't heard of Bandmade yet, please go to the link below in the pinned comment and support them on their channel, check out their music, and check out the Bandmade Community Discord, also linked in the pinned comment, where you can meet more of the cool fans that I was talking about in this video that also have a passion for great rock music and what Bandmade's doing. But anyway, that's where I'm going to wrap it up, so thanks for watching, I'll talk to you next time.